Hi everybody, this is Matt. Thanks for watching and welcome back. What options does a person have for concealed carry after they have had major surgery? That's a good question. This is a video that I never thought that I would do because nobody has ever breached this topic before. And you never see anybody to talk about it because most people don't really want to think about bad things happening to uh, themselves possibly in life. But it can be something as simple as a traffic accident that lays you up for a while, or it could be a serious medical issue that leaves you immobilized for a long period of time and then you have to go through rehabilitation and basically learn to walk again. So in life, we do have struggles. And this question came from a friend of mine. In the past 30 to 40 days, he has undergone four, at least four major surgeries. And so he's faced with a long road ahead of rehabilitation and everything else. He previously concealed carried every day and now he's wondering, what do I do? Now we've spoke on the phone, but I thought I'd do a video just because it might help other people. So in my case, when I was 39 years old, I was diagnosed with renal cell carcinoma. Translation, I had a tumor the size of my fist right here in my right kidney, which meant that I had to undergo major surgery. They cut me from here, right underneath the sternum, all the way around here. And I've got this weird little genetic or biological quirk, which means that normal painkillers don't work on me. So I felt everything. And my road to rehab was pretty long. There were things that I couldn't do because, for a long time because they were quite frankly too painful. And that recovery took me way, way longer than I ever thought. Fast forward to 2017. Most of you know that I had a heart attack, actually I had two heart attacks, had open heart surgery, so they saw open the sternum, crack it open, do all that stuff, and then once again, um, I'm back to cardiac rehab, walking, and all that stuff. That presented an issue for me when it came to concealed carry because it just did. Now, a lot of folks go, oh, pish posh, you know, that doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. When you undergo uh, and go through major surgery, you would be amazed at what little things make a difference, like the type of pants that you have. Now, here, I've got my regular pants on, my regular belt. Uh, I couldn't wear this for a long time. I had to wear the workout pants that are basically like stretchy pants that I always used uh, in the martial arts because they were more comfortable. Having a belt uh, tied on around me was very uncomfortable. Excess weight, extremely uncomfortable. So carrying something full size like this Beretta, mm -mm, that created an issue. So essentially as I'm walking around the neighborhood, I'm feeling really vulnerable and that's because we've got a lot of young hooligans walking around and uh, uh, there were a couple of incidents where I felt threatened. But what do you do? You know, mindset is really important during these things because like it or not, you know, your body is going to disagree with you. Your body's actually going to fight you and say, no, don't walk. No, don't do this. Don't do that. But you have to press through it. So anyway, with all that said, buddy, here we go. First and foremost, when it comes to concealed carry um, after rehab, quite frankly, you're not going to feel like it for a while because like I said, any excess weight whatsoever is horrible. Uh, when I went into cardiac rehab and they gave me a one pound weight and the only thing I had to do was hold it like this, you know, almost like I'm praying, hold it like this and then extend it out here. I laughed until I attempted to do it because normally I was used to taking 15 to 20 pound weights and doing the same thing. And I'm like, one pound weight? Are you crazy? No, the nurses were not crazy. So something like that really, really hurt. Um, 
Another thing that I did not anticipate was racking a firearm. So something like this Glock 43, which is an everyday carry piece, could I rack the slide? No, Be because all of this was not healed. So it doesn't matter if you're trying to do this or whatever, when your bones have been cut apart, things just don't work. You know, you gotta give it time to heal. This was completely out of the question. I mean, I would get a hold of this and I would just start applying any kind of pressure and it hurt. So these things, any semi-auto takes more force than what we would anticipate. The first firearm, the first semi-auto that I was ever able to rack the slide on was this Beretta 92. And because of that, this will always have a warm place in my heart because this was the very first one that I was able to successfully do that and rack the slide. And, but carrying it, no, couldn't carry it. The weight was too much. Like I said, the belt was too much. So what options do we have? Well, unfortunately, your options are limited. And a lot of it depends on where you were cut. You know, what... Everybody's body is different. We're all going to experience pain differently. Our mobility will be different depending on the situation. So the way that I see it, you know, if it comes to carrying at all, you basically have two options. One would be pocket carry if and when you get to that point that you can actually do it without creating a whole bunch of pain for yourself or ankle carry. So many of you have seen my ankle rig. Uh, this is a Galco holster. This way, this rig is not going to be putting pressure on anything up here. It's something that you're wearing around your ankle. Uh, the Galco holster like this, I really like. It uh, is secured quite well around your ankle. It works. There's going to be a lot of people out there that say, well, you know, ankle carry isn't ideal. Well, sometimes you have to do what you have to do, um, given the set of circumstances. But the thing to consider in this is, can you get down to the gun because of your mobility? Anybody that wears an ankle holster or has ever worn an ankle holster uh, knows that the way that you get to your firearm is you're stepping back like this. So I'm stepping back, I'm kneeling a little bit, grabbing the pant leg, and I've got to bend over to get it. Well, because of everything that's going on, you might not be able to do that. And you might not be stable when it comes to stepping back like this. Our stance is real narrow and balance can be a big issue. It can be a huge issue. Even with something as simple as uh, an individual that has had uh, hernia repair, it can be a big issue. So you have to consider that. There, there's no other good way of actually getting to an ankle holster. I mean, you know, could you squat like this? Yes, but still, it's fraught with problems. So what other option do we have? Well, we have pocket carry. Might completely change what type of firearm that you carry. So in this case, what I have here is I have the ubiquitous snub nose revolver. Now, was I carrying that in my pocket just like this? No. What I was doing is I was using a holster. So this is just a pocket holster. This one happens to be a sticky holster. That's the brand of it. And it allows you to carry like this with the trigger completely covered. And what else? What's the added benefit? Because what do we have in our pockets? You know, who knows? We have at minimum, even if it's an empty pocket, which this one was, you've got 
dust, you have uh, you know, little pieces of cloth sometimes, strings, whatever, uh, just because of the natural wear that happens. You always want to have a holster on something, even when it comes to pocket carry. Because revolvers, believe it or not, are a little bit more sensitive than a semi-auto when it comes to having any kind of debris get into the mechanisms. Uh, it can stop this from malfunctioning. The other thing is you can actually damage the gun because if you have coins or something like that in your pocket, uh, what can possibly go wrong with this picture? Well, the coins or keys, which are made out of metal, could do what? They could rub up against the crown and they could damage the crown, which means that your accuracy goes completely south for the winter. Even worse, you could have something that gets stuck into that barrel. And, um, you know, that is a hazardous situation. So always have something like this in a holster if you're carrying in your pocket. So maybe you're not a revolver type of person, but maybe this is what you have to carry. Because I know in my case, I did not want to carry uh, something like a semi-auto, like this, if I couldn't rack the slide. It made no sense whatsoever. Um, plus, you know, until I got to a certain point, I didn't even know if I could handle recoil. Because recoil, well, what does it do? Every time that you see a slow motion uh, video shot, you see these waves ripple down the forearm and the bicep. Well, recoil is something that, you know, you can call people a wimp, but when it hurts, it hurts. After you've had major surgery, it hurts to cough, it hurts just to do simple things. So you might have to make some adjustments there. But quite frankly, for a while, you probably won't be carrying just simply because everything hurts. But what I would encourage anybody who has gone through major surgery to do, please make sure that you follow your doctor's instructions. And if they offer rehab, rehabilitation for uh, physical rehab, cardiac rehab, please do it. I was amazed when I went through my, uh, my cardiac rehab at how few people were actually in cardiac rehab. A lot of people, they don't take that seriously, but rehab is extremely important. I know that it hurts to do things, but you know, please you know, follow your doctor's directions. We wanna keep you around for a while. So anyway, I hope that this helps. Um, options on things like this are kind of sort of limited, but like I said, mindset is very important when it comes to overcoming anything that we face in life. So until next time, thanks for watching folks and everybody have a good one. And of course, be safe out there.